What's up everyone, this is Felix. In this tutorial, as promised, we're going to talk about regular for loops as opposed to generate for loops as we went over in the last video. Now if you recall, generate for loops were used inside a generate block or generate space to create something new like we defined a wire, we made, we instantiated a clock. Regular for loops are going to be inside what's called procedural space or procedural blocks. And inside procedural blocks, we're not allowed to create new things like wires or registers or instances of anything. So the regular for loops are going to be a lot more specific, uh, a lot more versatile. Now even though generate for loops are a lot more versatile than regular procedural for loops, neither is better than the other. They're used for different things. Both are the preferred way. It's it's not like, oh, should I use a generate loop or procedural for loop? No. They're used for different things, but usually we end up using generate for loops. They're just a lot more common for the applications that we're doing. An application where a procedural for loop can be helpful is when you're initializing a lot of memory or, or a lot of registers at the beginning of or at the startup of your program. So let's go ahead and create a large piece of memory. So make a register and let's give it 16 bits worth of address and we'll call it mem and we'll make it 127 there, so it's 16 bits wide and 128 bits deep of memory. Now when the FPGA first powers on, these registers are all going to come on in random positions. We don't know if they're going to be 0 or 1, so we, we could consider them all X at this point. But usually we want to know what they are. We want to make sure that they're in one state or another. So let's set them all to zero. Of course, to set this all to zero manually would take quite a long time. So we can use a for loop, a procedural for loop, to speed the process up. We already have our memory created, so we're not going to use, we're not going to be creating anything new, just assigning values to this register. So we don't need a generate for loop. A procedural one is what we want for this. So we have to start out by defining, just like we did with the generate loop, we have to define our loop variable. But instead of being a generate variable, it's just going to be an integer. And we'll just call it j. Now, same we're going to use the same syntax, but we have to put the procedural for loop in a procedural block. Right now, we are in generate space. And remember, this generate and then generate here are optional. If even if they weren't there, we're all we're, this is all in generate space where we're creating wires and instances and things. So we need to get out of generate space and into procedural space and because we're initializing these things when the FPGA first turns on you can create an initial block and inside here will get run when it first powers on. Perfect. Now we can get into our for loop and we'll start with our j is 0 
and we want to go up until our last bit of memory. So less than 16 will take us up to 15. And then j equals j plus 1. We'll increment by 1 for each of them, just like the other. All right. And now everything in here will be run 16 times from zero, j equals 0 to j equals 15. All right. Let's take our memory. Since j is going to range from 0 to 15, we'll index our memory address like that and then build a, a list of all of the zeros that we want. So we'll put those in curly braces to indicate construction of a list, and we want 128 bits deep of zeros. So this right here will create a string of 128 zeros. And that's going to assign it to one of these slots of memory, one of these rows of memory. And then the for loop will do this, will make sure that all of this happens at once. Uh, all of this happens to all of the memory. Now one more distinction that I want to make sure that we get clear. One more distinction I want to make sure that we get clear because this is totally different from conventional programming. And this is one of the biggest mistakes that FPGA beginners make, especially if they've come from another programming language. These for loops do not do not get executed sequentially. We're used to for loops that say, okay, run everything in here. All right, now increment the value. Run everything again, increment. Run everything again, increment. And it does it one after the other. But that's not how this works. With the FPGA, we're describing the hardware, especially in this generate loop. So, what happens is, it says, all right, build all of this, and it, it increments this, and it says build all of this, increments build all of this, and what it does is, it essentially builds all of it at once. You're just saying build however many you have. So we have four, and it tells it build four of these, and you essentially treat your for loop as if it happened instantaneously because it's just building everything in here. It is not executing one after the other. This for loop happens simultaneously, all four of these. So if you're looking for a loop where you can have it do something, clock like in one clock cycle, it ticks, it increments, moves to the next, does stuff, tick, does stuff, tick, the for loop is not for you. In fact, there is not a loop in Verilog that can do that. So don't get confused. You can do that behavior, but you're going to have to build it using synchronous logic, not just using a loop as you would in conventional programming. So I just want to make that, that really big distinction um, that these things run simultaneously not sequentially inside these. There you have it, the difference between generate for loops where we can create new things and we're, we're fairly unlimited at what we can do in these and then we've got our sequential ones which are good for something like this, initializing and then and just saving ourselves some hassle and of Rather than typing this 16 times, we can just type it once. 
and then we also looked at the initial block which is a procedural block that only runs at power on so that we can make sure that everything is initialized to values that we know we can avoid unwanted X's now I know this is a lot to take in there's some big differences between conventional programming here and describing hardware with an HDL so if you have questions feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to answer your questions and if we need to we might even make another video to further explain generate versus procedural